Hello, this is Mori reporting from Berlin, and this is part five of my using React hooks with V3 series. And in this hopefully short video, I'll try to explain how to add some basic interactivity to the bar chart we created last time. So we just want to show the value of each bar uh, on mouse over. Stay tuned. In the last video, we created this uh, bar chart, which animates its uh, values and also changes color depending on the uh, value of each bar. For this video I actually changed my uh, VS Code color theme because one of you actually said that he or she got blinded by my light theme so I just want to try out uh, this dark theme here and also I added a new button called add data which just adds a random uh, value to my uh, data array. This will be useful um, for the interactivity part later. So now let's make these bars interactive and display the value of each bar on top of it uh, when we hover over it. So uh, to do that, we just need to add another line here to our chain. Uh, we have to say dot on, where we have to uh, define the event we want to handle and what we want to do when this event basically triggers. We have to, def to define it before the transition, this is important. And the first um, event we want to handle is called mouse enter. We can now define our handler function, which will uh, also receive the value and the index of the current bar, um, just like the other callbacks uh, we have defined here. And uh, with these two arguments, you want to do the following. We want to say, hey, D3, every time I hover over a bar uh, or every time I do this mouse enter, I want you to select all the elements in my SVG with the class tooltip, let's say, and synchronize them with the data I'm giving you here. And the data is going to be just the value of um, that bar because I want to have a single tooltip at any given time. And then I want to say join, create a new text element basically for every entering piece of data. And then I want that every entering and updating piece of data or element gets the uh, class tooltip. This is needed uh, so that the tooltip can update. So now when, when I hover over um, a bar, you can see I have a new element text with the class tooltip, and only one. To define the content of that text element, uh, I can go ahead and say dot text, and I want the content to be the value of uh, the bar I am hovering over. So if I now save this and hover, you can see I have a text element which reflects the values. So to position this, uh, text element on the x-axis, I have to add another attribute, the attribute x, and here I'm going to use the x scale, which I also use to position the bars on the x-axis, and here I'm going to pass the index of uh, the current bar element, and note that I am not using the same expression I have used here, because the index in this callback, callback function is referring to the element in uh, that data array. So if I were to write a callback function like this, the index would refer to the data array here. And this data array is only one element long, so the index would always be zero. So we need to access the index uh, from here, which is the index of an element in this data array. I hope that made sense. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. So now you can see I uh, am now positioning the text element on the x-axis aligned with the bars. And now I want another attribute, the attribute y, to position the uh, text element on the y-axis. And here I want to use the y-scale, which uh, will use the value of the current bar. And this will position the text element on top of uh, each bar. There you go. I will add a little bit of a margin to the uh, text element like so. And then I want to transition the uh, opacity of the uh, text element when it comes in. For, for that, I will say um, 
attribute opacity one. And let's see how this looks like. You can see it fades in on the first time, but it does not do that for the next bars. It is because we are using the same text element, which gets updated. And uh, we basically need to remove it first uh, so that the fade in effect can um, apply again. So, and we also don't want uh, the uh, text value here to hang around when we're uh, not hovering over a bar. So let's uh, add another uh, handler here, the on Ma oops, um, mouse leaf handler. And here we basically want to say, hey, uh, D3, select the uh, tooltip element, like the element of the class tooltip you find in my SVG, and just remove it. Let's see how this looks like. You can see it fades in every time I, ho I hover over um, an element. So this is already pretty nice. We can uh, see the values. And if I now add some new data to my uh, data array, I can also see the values there. But uh, the text element is not really centered. It was actually just a coincidence that it looked so nice before. So now we're going to center them uh, properly by saying attribute uh, text anchor middle. This will uh, center the text element on the left edge of our bar. And now we have to add half of the width of that bar to the X coordinate of our text element. And that is done like this. We have to say X scale index plus X scale uh, bandwidth divided by two. So let's see how this looks like. Looks fine. If I add some data, looks fine also. So one more thing uh, before I wrap up this video, as you might have noticed in the beginning, uh, the text values here, they were like jumping in uh, when they were displayed. So I want to do this little animation. Uh, for that, I'm going to actually transition the Y attribute as well. And if I save this, you can see that they're like transitioning from zero to the value they have right now. This also looks nice, but I want it to be a little bit more subtle. And for that, I'm going to say, okay, when a new element is uh, created, I don't want it to be just a text element. I want that every entering piece of data, I want to uh, append a text element. So I want still to create that text element, but I actually want it to have the initial Y attribute, which is going to be just like here, but not minus eight, but let's say minus four. So it is going to jump from this initial value to this uh, value when it's basically updates. So let's see how this looks like. You can see they have this like little animation going on. So that's it for this video. I hope you liked it. This covers the basics of uh, interactivity in D3. And uh, I hope in the future I'll do some videos about some more advanced uh, interactivity topics. And um, yeah, I hope to see you then, I guess. Goodbye.